We're not done with River State. And joining us on the program to discuss on the outcome of the River State Governorship Election Petition Tribunal judgment that was delivered yesterday is one of the petitioners and governorship candidate of the All Progressives Congress in the state, Mr. Tony Cole. Mr. Cole, thank you for joining us on Lunchtime Politics. Thank you, Jeffrey. How are you today? I'm very well, and you? Can't complain. It's another day, another battle. Yeah, that's why I asked on you, because I wanted to know what's your immediate reaction to yesterday's ruling of the tribunal. Uh, they dismiss your petition, citing the fact that your sponsor, the APC, as enshrined in 177, section 177 of the Constitution, withdrew their petition. What's your reaction? I think my immediate reaction was one of disappointment and surprise. Uh, surprised at the angle that the judgment came, uh, which basically says that APC, my party, had withdrawn. But that was clear from, uh, from when that had happened, and we knew that I had my basic right as an individual, as a candidate, as, as one of the key sponsors uh, of, the, of the election, and whose right was being infringed on to defend myself in court. And we admit this abundantly clear to the court severally that the party has its right and I have my right. So it was, it was a bit surprising to hear that that was the main judgment uh, and main fulcrum with which the judgment was made. I, I think it was faulty. The constitution, of, as well as you know, I think is a ground norm like everybody knows. And um, section 177 that I cited, for anybody to qualify to be a governor, uh, issues of nationality, age, academic qualification, um, and all of that. And then the membership and sponsorship of a party. So at the point when your party withdrew from being a petitioner in this particular case, was this not clear that this was already a lost cause ahead of time, in your view? No, because... No, absolutely not. Now, take everything that you just said. So, one, you mentioned membership of a party. APC has not withdrawn my membership at any time. I've never been suspended from the party. I've never been sanctioned from the party. The party never called me one day to say, this is the position of the party. We're no longer interested. You cannot pursue your case again. That never happened. That's number one. Number two, as at the time of the election, on the day of the election, the party sponsored me. I was the legitimate sponsored candidate of the party, which meant that I had two rights on that day. The first right was that I was standing on behalf of the party and all candidates and all uh, the people of River State that wanted uh, the, the APC to win. And I had my own rights as well. So none of this was taken away. What the party decided to do and basically, this was done without an NWC uh, memo. There was no meeting where the NWC of our party sat down, called me and said, this is the position of the NWC, this is the position of the party. That never happened. So essentially, some agreement was made, which we don't know about, and they went to court. But that's besides the point. That has been done. Some say that I was thrown under the bus, that this was an arrangement and a negotiation between uh, the FCT minister and the party. I have no idea because no one ever called me to say that. But the key issue is this. I have my own rights and they had to be respected. And my right was that I could go to court on the grievance that I legitimately, I was on, uh, on the ballot. I ran an election, and I don't believe that the election, uh, election results was what it should be, and so we went to court on that. Uh, I'm, I'm going to ask some more questions, but I'm not a lawyer, but don't you see it like what that part of the section of the Constitution we're trying to consider is what, like some people have told you, maybe being thrown under the bus, is more like a parent posture for who you're sending into that race. And then the parents said, no, I no longer want my son or my daughter in this particular race. That was what I was asking you. So the next question will be, are you disappointed with the APC in your state? In my state, in River State, absolutely not. The APC in River State has actually stood very firm. 
and has continued on this journey, on this battle, irrespective of everything. You see, what people may not realize is that that is... Mr. Mr. Cole, just, just sorry, sorry about cutting in. I, I wanted to understand, sorry, I wanted to understand what you're trying to say. Just a minute, sir. I asked that question. He said there's no, yes. you don't have any grievance against them. They are the ones that withdrew their petition. No, that led no, to the decision. That led to the decision that state. made the tribunal dismiss your your case. No, so let let me correct that. For, uh, let me okay. correct what you said. You said, okay. "Am I disappointed with APC in my state in River State?" Yes. And I said, "No." All right. And I think the That's question you enough. meant to ask is, "Am I disappointed in APC at the national level?" That withdrew. It wasn't my state APC that withdrew. Okay. APC River State stood firm all the way through this election. They never withdrew, they never stepped down, and they continued through this process. Who withdrew their uh, petition was APC at the national level. And that's what I said at the beginning, that this was not a national working committee decision. I believe that it was a decision with a very small group of people, and nobody, the party chairman in River State was not called, I wasn't called, nobody was called to say that this was the decision that was going to be taken. And that is very, very disappointing. I'm not happy with that decision at all. Now, at the core of your struggle is arguably the disunity. I know you argue that your party is together, but we've been following development in your state for quite a while. Remember what happened in 2019? It was also internal issues within your party that led to the disqualification of the party in the race. You remember the direct and indirect primary and all Absolutely. of that happened. Uh, and, and things appear to be Absolutely. festering. Are you going to say here that internal fracas, internal crisis within the APC in River State, not national now, is not responsible again for what is playing out here? Absolutely, no. In this particular case, APC was united and there wasn't any fracas within the APC in River State that led to this election. Let's understand certain things and you may have to just go through history to, to clear this. The first aspect of it is that in 2019, APC had a major problem. We had a fracas with Senator Abe uh, and ourselves who, and that's what caused the, the, the problem. In 2023, Senator Magnus Abbey left APC and went to SDP. Once that happened, we had a united house. And so APC River State went to this election as one unit. There was no fracas. And it's important that we clear this. What has happened here is a very simple calculation of PDP's, uh, yes, on Wiki, coming in to an arrangement with, uh, with APC at the national level that has caused a lot of misunderstanding and murky waters where we are. And that's what's going on. But that notwithstanding, look, when we take a look at this judgment moving forward, there are many things that uh, we have to begin to understand. And one of them is that how, by how much are we going to reward impunity? Are we going to reward all sorts of things? And I'll give you an example. The court says to us that we needed to prove certain things and the things that we needed to prove required that we get documents from INEC. Everyone knows, and we put this to the court themselves, that INEC, first of all, ignored subpoena, refused to release CTC documents. Our lawyers were even arrested with our documents, and we had to get them out. And one of the documents that we got, we were, uh, one of the lawyers that went there was abducted. We had all of this. PDP picketed INEC for nearly a week to prevent us from getting evidence. All of these things were not just televised, but also okay. put before the court. The tribunal sits, just one minute, the tribunal sits in Abuja today, not in Port Harcourt. The reason why we sat in Abuja today was because of the violence that was vetted on my person and the APC in River State ahead of getting the documents and filing. And so we now move to Abuja. Then this same tribunal then says to us that you needed to bring documents that INEC should have released to prove your case. Uh, and your right. case does not, not lack merit because you don't have those documents. How does that uh, work? Uh, all right, Mr. Cole, uh, just to put on record that um, what you say about the former governor minister now, allegations um, uh, from your end. But let me wrap up with this, that on what ground are you going to appeal this if you are appealing it? And what is the national 
uh, working committee of the APC saying to you after this judgment was read out? 30 seconds, if you can. So, we are, we have, so I haven't had that conversation. I'm waiting for the documents to come. The next thing that we're going to do is we're now going to this new national APC, and we're going to sit down and demand from them explanations as to how they want us to move forward. We are party members, we are bona fide party members, and we need to come to an agreement as to how we move forward. Nobody can deny us our rights in this case. All right, Mr. Tony Cole, governorship candidate of the All Progressives Congress in River State. Thank you so much for joining us on Lunchtime Politics. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Always a pleasure.